guys, it's Sam and today I want to talk about my book con and BEA experience this year. So this is my first year returning to book expo and book con for the first time in I think three years? I skipped two years. Anyway, it's been a hot minute since I have attended a book con or a book expo. And this year I only attended Friday of book expo and then also attended book con on the weekend. So I am coming to this from somebody who's had prior experience in previous years going to both events and feeling very overwhelmed by them and having thoughts about them back then as well and also having thoughts about the events and how they didn't feel like a space for the online book community and that's what created and inspired Book Netfest. So I wanted to make it very clear that I'm talking about a book event but BookCon is not a competing event for Book Netfest because Book Netfest is a to has a totally different purpose than BookCon. BookCon is very much for getting the like arcs and books and meeting like a ton of authors and all of this like sort of consumerism and like wildness and it just serves a different purpose than BookNet Fest, which was specifically created because we weren't seeing the kinds of content that we wanted to see and the kinds of interactions that we wanted at other events, not just BookCon, but like Y'all Fest and some of these. We saw that there's a lot of events for like publishers and the industry, such as Book Expo, for readers and meeting authors and getting books like BookCon and Y'all Fest, but there wasn't really anything that was more about us as content creators, specifically for books and forging connections, which can happen at those other events, but not quite as organically as we would have liked, which is why BookNet Fest happened. So I don't feel like I can discuss BookCon without also acknowledging BookNet Fest because BookNet Fest came out of my experiences and Maddie's experiences at BookCon. But again, it's not a competing event because it serves different purposes and we don't benefit also financially from BookNet Fest. It's a non-profit event and we get nothing financially back from that event. All of the money that we get for the event goes into the event and none of it goes to us as creators. So we get nothing out of having more people come or bad mouthing another event because we don't get anything financially from that. We do this because we love it. But anyway, I wanted to get into BookCon and Book Expo. I had a lot of people asking me about my feedback on it. There was a lot of discussions, as there always is after almost every book event, when a lot of creators get together in one space, no matter what platform people are from, or even, it's not just a book community thing, it's also like it happens with VidCon and the beauty events and gaming events and whatever. Whenever people come together, there's always some like discussion after about the events that occurred there. So let's get into it. So going into BookCon and Book Expo, I knew that I was going mostly for making connections. I wanted to feel like I was connecting with a lot of other people that I hadn't been able to really meet or see. There's obviously a lot of newer booktubers that I haven't gotten a chance to meet because most people try to go to these bigger events. So I wanted to be able to meet new people and kind of reintroduce myself to the community and really feel like I was, you know, I go to events to make connections with people. That's primarily what I do. So I knew going in that Book Expo and BookCon are inherently not for me because they're about mostly getting books and meeting authors. And meeting authors can be fun, but I prefer to do them more at like individual signings if they come to my area. Or I just, I'm okay with getting books as they come out. I'm not an ARC collector. I don't really care. The only books that I really wanted at the event that I was able to get on the days that I went were The Beautiful by Renee Adier and The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. Two books. And I got those two books and that's all that I wanted. I didn't want to participate in the running for the lines and the craziness and all of that. That inherently is not for me and I knew that before going to the event. So I was going to the event with the purpose of meeting people. Even knowing that that's not necessarily what this event is good for, but just knowing that by the sheer amount of people that are going, there is like statistically a good chance of meeting new people. So the one day of Book Expo that I went to was very chill. Book Expo felt a lot more chill than it had in previous years when I went. Again, in previous years I was kind of going more for the books and it was just a lot more like planning and all of this. I think the fact that I went for one thing at Book Expo made it a lot easier. The floor also seemed less crowded than it had in previous years of Book Expo. It just seemed a lot more chill even than it had in previous years because again I've attended before and it's been a lot but this year it didn't feel bad so I was feeling pretty good after Book Expo. There was a lot of sense of dread about BookCon felt from almost everyone that I've talked to. So that was a theme that I noticed throughout the event is that everybody, when people go to BookCon but they're also like dreading BookCon. Like the the amount of people and the fact that like most of us are like sort of socially anxious or introverted and like the amount of people is just a lot for people. So I didn't talk to a lot of people as far as content creators that were excited to be there. They were just like, okay, 
I'm excited to meet people. I'm excited to meet people that might like watch my content. But it's just going to be a lot. Like that's how everybody across the board felt. And that's fair because just the sheer amount of people that there are there. So pretty much immediately from doors opening at BookCon and I went the first day of BookCon to get Aaron Morgenstern. It wasn't that bad for to get to the line. I was a general admission attendee. I had I was sitting in line with everybody else. We got there at like 8, 8.30 in the morning and the doors opened at 10, stand in a general queue line. But there seemed to be enough copies that almost everyone that tried to get Aaron Morgenstern's The Starless Sea got it. Um, so that was nice. So it wasn't like a mad rush. I power walked over to the booth, but there's plenty of tickets when I got there. It was not crazy. I didn't see anything nuts. I understand that some things that were a lot happened later and there was like some fighting over things, but I didn't witness any of that. So I can't speak to any of that because again, that was the only book that I ever wanted from the event. And I pretty much tried to stay off the show floor after that a lot of times. The like main show floor went more in like the vendor area and outside because I didn't want to clutter up the show floor when I had no purpose for being there as far as getting books. So the thing that I always notice first with book on is how consumerism driven it is. And again, that's just not something I'm very into. Like I said, I wasn't going for a lot of books. I am I'm okay with having like, I'm trying to get a smaller collection as far as TBR. So I'm not trying to get a lot of TBR books, all of that. But I notice, especially when you attend Book Expo and then you attend BookCon, how many things obviously that are needing to be paid for. And just like this buy, buy, buy mentality, which again, it's a, it's a cheaper event and it's for the public. So that is what they want to do. And there are things you can still get things for free or whatever, but like each year and for people that have attended for a long time, people see year after year that it's becoming more about buying than, you know, getting some of the free things that people originally went for. So there's always something that I notice. Also, I don't like, and this is another reason why we created BookNet Fest, the event for a very long time has kind of talked down to its attendees. So not necessarily in the like material for it, but you know, leading up to it and stuff, it's just very like, and there's always like articles and stuff about like the bad behavior of the attendees and people running and people fighting and people do, but the event promotes the bad behavior. And again, people like have control of their bad behavior, but the event and the publishers very much are like, run to get this arc, this is a secret arc drop, you know, we only, very limited amount, da 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 da, and then they are like, why are people acting so crazy? And it's like, because you make this, this like limited thing, FOMO, whatever, and that you tap into this like primal thing with people and a, like a, a gr large groups and like, of course they're gonna be that way. And so the fact that like publishers get mad and the event gets mad, it's like you created a space for the public in which this is going to happen. For most of the people there, they are, this is the only chance for them ever, ever to get arcs because they're not content creators for it. So it's just like, what do you expect? to happen. So that's always something that I'm like, because it very much like talks down to and also is like, this event is about YA readers that are like young girls and like, mm. there's always just like this air that I just don't like. Also, there's this feeling that BookCon just like tolerates the online book community. So as far as the actual panels, which the ones that I saw that were book to book community related were on the second day, they are pushed into a corner. The second panel was on like the worst stage in horrible lighting, like none of the lighting at BEA and BookCon is very good, but like half the panelists were in shadow, the very end of the day. So the meetup and the panel were like the very last slot on the very, you know, on the last day. So it just very much feels like we'll tolerate you, but like <laughs> go over there, you know? And that's always just like a feeling as well. It's like, you don't feel like you're properly integrated into the event and what you're there for isn't properly integrated into the event. It's just like, Okay, fine. But with all those key things being said, what I just like most about the event isn't really even about the event itself, and instead the behaviors that it influences and promotes in some fellow content creators that I only really see at this event. I can't exactly pinpoint what it is. I think because it isn't open to the public thing and there's a lot of people's like subscribers and readers and viewers that attend this event to meet some of these content creators, there's this feeling that some people seem to get of like celebrity and separation. And it every year since I've been a beginning small baby booktuber, because I think the first one I went to, I had like a thousand subscribers all the way up to now. I've always been like, I hate this. Again, I watch a lot of YouTube, so my opinion is skewed because I see people with like millions and millions of subscribers. So for me, booktube ain't shit. There becomes this like feeling of celebrity that some people I think in like larger groups, especially, buy into. And again, I don't see it so much at like other events like Y'all Fest or even like author signings that are like smaller. It is about this like 
big group of like this big open to the public but also large groups of content creators where it becomes this like toxic feeding into one another thing that I, just makes me so disappointed and frustrated. I feel like this event just like promotes this feeling of like needing separation and I get that it's overwhelming. I am not discounting anyone's feelings of being overwhelmed or being an introvert or being anxious or anything. Like obviously yes, take time for you, but I don't feel as though the event, in my opinion, made it so that you couldn't do that. Like so that people couldn't, there was a lot of people that took advantage of like the press rooms or getting away or not being on the show floor or leaving for periods of time. It's not like you're boxed in or that people are chasing you around. Everyone's always gonna have awkward, weird interactions that just happens with being in public <laughs> but there's not this like overwhelming feeling of that all the time that you can't escape so like i said yes the event promotes this behavior but ultimately it comes down to individuals deciding to participate in this kind of behavior and that's what has me so disappointed and it leaves me like i left the event feeling just like ew that is not my game that is not my space I, I can never imagine a time in which I would have so many subscribers that I would feel like I'm a celebrity status, anything like that. I'm not even saying that the people who are at that level feel that way. I feel like sometimes it comes from other directions and not even from the person themselves. But there's just this separation thing that happens, especially in friend groups. And there was some really good discussion about people being like, not everyone's going to be your friend. You can't tag along on every group. And that is so 100% true because I do find myself sometimes at events being like, I don't want to be rude, but I just want to hang out with my people that I only see three times a year. And that happens. Like, that's naturally going to happen with friend groups. But also, at every event, I always meet new people that become a part of my friend group. I met some great, amazing people this year that I hadn't got to meet really in previous years, or I only got to, like, talk to a little bit. And there's always going to be people also that I've met before that I, like, you never quite get the chance to hang out, like, and you really want to because you both, like, really like each other, but you're in, like, two slightly separate but overlapping friend groups, and that group is doing this, and your group is doing that, and it's just, like, you can't, you know, it's never going to be perfect. But again, this year, like, the best thing about any event, really, for me is not the event itself, necessarily, like, with, like, Y'all Fest and Bocon specifically is what I'm talking about. It's not really the event itself. It's about like the dinners and the lunches and meeting the people and doing things outside. So like I had a really great dinner with Amber and Jules and Chelsea and Mari and I before a play that we were all going to. And it was like part of one of the best parts of the whole event. The meetups were really great. Like I got to meet like some really cool people that I'm like, okay, these are my friends now. This is great. So that was really awesome. But just like, I ultimately left being like, okay, those people are the highlight of my event. I'm so glad I got to meet those people, but I'm also like so disappointed in this community that I know can do better and that we help to create an event in which people can meet and do better. And I, and because we have an event like that, I know people can do it. Like I know that there doesn't need to be a divide and that people can all from any platform size can hang out organically It not be overwhelming to anybody. And yes, it's because our event is smaller. I totally get that. Again, it's not, we're not competing events. It's just, I know that these interactions can happen and it doesn't need to be this way. It was weird. There was, there was times like there's a lot of people that got invited to different events outside of the event, like little like publisher parties and things like that. And you could always tell like the attitude there because some people would just say it like it's normal, you know, and some people would be like, and I hate it. Like, and I just know that that's like, that's some people's personalities. But again, I find that it comes out more in these very large events, which is why the event itself is not for me because of what it promotes, how it just pushes aside the book community and how it doesn't have any deep kinds of discussions. The panels are always the same kinds of things over and over again. This 101 stuff that yes, some people need, but all it does every year is the same 101 stuff. I want to have deeper discussions with people. We are having deep discussions on these platforms. I want it to be translated into real life. And that's again, what BookNet Fest is about. I don't want to have the same bullshit and patting each other on the back for doing the bare minimum. I just don't, I don't like that and what these big events can promote sometimes and this separation and this lack of community when we can do better and like i said earlier booktube ain't shit <laughs> like we we are not that big we are not celebrities we are a very niche group and i'm just like so floored and frustrated and like honestly i'm, I'm very much like i'm not mad i'm just very disappointed because i know that these like better interactions better discussions organic interactions, not celebrity, not separation, that stuff can happen. And I, I feel, 
and this is maybe just my opinion, I feel that those interactions are better. Those other interactions probably do have their place. I do not see a place for those in my life, and I do not want to be involved in that kind of separation from a community that I got into because I wanted to talk to other book people, and I wanted to be friends with other book people, and I wanted to have deeper discussions about books. So that's why I don't plan to participate in some of these events. Again, I can only see myself going back ever because I want to reintroduce and like meet new book people that are new to the community, and that event brings in the most people just by sheer size, and I get that, but I leave that event feeling not invigorated, not inspired, don't want to make new content, just like so utterly exhausted in a way that I don't really leave any other event, that I don't leave events like Y'all Fest or other signings or any other book festival that I've gone to. Also, I hate New York City. That contributes as well. I hate New York City. I'm gonna get five down votes just for saying I hate New York City, but I like other big, like I like almost every other big city. It's really just New York. There's too many people. There's trash everywhere. I don't like it. <laughs> but anyway, that is how I feel about BookCon and Book Expo. They are inherently events that are not for me, they have their place, and the shining star at any event that I ever go to is the people that I meet and the connections that I make, and I am somebody who constantly wants to foster connections with people, quality connections. I'm always going to be somebody that's quality over quantity with anything in life, and that is what I so crave at these kinds of events and deeper discussions and things like that. So that is what I plan to seek out and invest money in and do things with in the future, going to maybe more like science fiction and fantasy conventions with like my particular niche of what I really like to read. Those events tend to have deeper discussions of things and those kinds of topics. Obviously, promoting and planning and doing all the things with BookNet Fest, and then even events like Y'all Fest that are very chill in a nice setting <laughs> that I really like. I love Charleston and have like really fun panels and things, and even though the panels aren't really much different than some of the 101 stuff. They're a little bit deeper. They're maybe like 102, 103. And they are like fun and chill and low key and it just it doesn't feel so overwhelming and in a way that you can't make those connections. I am about connections. I'm gonna keep saying that so I can probably just end the video now. Comment down below and let me know your thoughts about the community and events and things. And if you have any events that you really love going to, you can say if they're international. I will always attempt. <laughs> but let me know. Let me know if there's any like event that does a really good job. I've gone to Nova Teen Book Festival, Boston Teen Author Festival, Y'all Fest a number of times, obviously Book Expo and Book Con, Baltimore Book Festival. I think those are all of them. But if you have any other ones that you think are like really great, especially for events, events that you feel like really talk about like deeper topics and are less like arc focused, which I feel like really is only Book Expo and Book Con, then comment them below and let me know because I'd love to know. I'm gonna add it to my travel itinerary because you know your girl really wants to travel more and if I can travel around book events, even better. So thank you all for watching and I'll see all of you guys soon. Bye.